Okay, I've turned this into a meter translation now. And what I basically did is I just patched, you know, pasted the text from Ephesians 1 read parse doc and from the 1 Peter meter doc. And then I made a translation in here which isn't really finished yet, but it'll give you a better sense of how this thing works. And then when you print this out, it's in landscape mode. See, I'll show you. It's in landscape mode right there so that you can make your own translations to the right if you want or make notes and changes. Um, this is only going through the first couple of verses of 1 Peter 3 and 4, so I'm going to be adding to it and changing it. But at least you'll get a sense of the cadence and the meaning a little bit better than before if you're looking at this now. So I'm going to slightly go through it. There are going to be more videos on this. I'm not anywhere near done with it yet. Okay, but just so that you see the Greek and the verse is on the left. The meter translation that I've got so far is on the right. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to copy in English the same cadence and syllables that are in the Greek. So you get a better sense in English about what the Greek meant to the Greek reader. Okay? So now we're going to go through it. It should be somewhat familiar to you by now, so I can go a little quickly. Okay? Ice wheel tesian into airship sonship, di Jesu Christu, through Jesus the Christ. Oh, I, I forgot to explain. See where I've got the word bracketed here? It's meant in the Greek, but the word isn't in the Greek. So I'm somewhat of a purist, okay? So I bracketed it, but you need to read the words in the brackets in order to copy the, the cadence and the, and the syllables. Okay, so we'll start again. I swear to sin into airship sonship, D Jesu Christu, through Jesus the Christ. And then we get to our refrain. I said Peter Zosan, the Anastasios, into hope ever living through his resurrection. Jesu Christu at Necron, Jesus the Christ from the dead. I Satom Kata into whom we are, ten you do kyan, per his own delight, do telematos out to, of his own will and purpose. Then we got our refrain again. I said Peter Zosan, the Anastasios, into hope ever living through his resurrection. Jesu Christu at Necron, Jesus the Christ from the dead. Then we have our new stanza. I scleron nomian, entrance to possession, af thar ton, that can't die, kai ham kamian ton, and can't spoil, kamaran ton, nor fade away, teteremenen, under God's guarding, and nuranos is humas, in the heavens for you all, I non into his praise doxis is caritos out to glory of his grace that glory of grace that is his yes is caritos in him as in whom we're holy graced out and toy up a man no inside the beloved and no echo man by whom we now hold the napolutrosen the redemption rescue, the atehuchaimatos autu, by his blood we may pure, yes, de na fe sin, debt now cancelled. And we have our final refrain. I scleronomian, entrance to possession, afarton, that can't die, kai kamianton, and can't spoil, kamaranton nor fade away. Tetere menen, or tetere menen, under God's guarding. And urana se humas, in the heavens for you all, ten napolutrosin, the redemption rescue, dia tu haimatos autu, vai his blood were made pure, yes, ten na fe sin, debt now can't solve. See how that works in that call. 
And this goes on. Peter is metering to Paul all the way through Peter's verse 12. So this is going to be a lot longer. This ends up being like a sort of epic poem, okay, that you chanted while you were working or, you know, walking to Ephesus or mending flax or standing in line, okay? And people did a lot of this. They didn't have TV and cell phones in the Old Testament. What everybody did, from the stupidest to the smartest, is they prided themselves on their language. They played word games. And I don't, you know, this isn't just true in the Bible. It, it, it's in all the literature of the ancient times, and not just in Greek either. It's especially true in the Hebrew, and it's true in all the uh, Semitic languages. And I'm sure, you know, I don't know enough about it, but I'm sure you can find it true of the Indian languages and Pashtun and all that. And in those societies today, because they're less technologically developed, they still play word games. They play games with meter, they play games with elision, like this is elision. You don't pronounce the a yi. It's d e su. Okay? They play word games like that all the time. It's very common. And why we don't recognize it happening in the Bible, I don't understand. Because the scholars have been debating about this for 300 years. How come I find it and they don't? And the only reason I can come up with, because I'm not smart like them, is that I ask God, where is it? And I asked him that starting when I was working on Isaiah 53, because there's a thing called the Molar Scroll of Isaiah 53, and it showed words missing in Isaiah 53.10. There was a big gap in the scroll where a scribe left a big space, you know, to imply that words were missing. And I thought, well, what words are missing? And then I tried to back translate in the Hebrew the Greek words that I found because there were extra Greek words. And I found out that those Greek words were just an amplified translation. There were no Hebrew words missing from Isaiah 53. Okay, so how come other people didn't notice that? Well, I asked God. They didn't. That's how come I know. It's certainly not my smarts, because I'm not smart. I sound smart only because God is empowering me. That's it. There's no other reason. All right? So if you want to know, then you use 1 John 1, 9 like I do, which is all the time, because I'm always sinning, and ask God. Okay, God, where's the answer here? If you're an atheist and you want to know God exists, you ask the ceiling. If you're a Christian and you already know God exists, you got to ask the ceiling. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 5. That's the lifestyle you're supposed to live. It's not supposed to be about works or anything else. You talk to God, you learn Bible. That's it. That's spiritual life. So now, let's go through this again. Only I'm going to show a couple of things here. I squeal to sin. Into airship sonship. Why did I translate it that way? There's only two words here. Okay. Squeal to sin means both airship and sonship. And because of the extra syllables, I was able to bring that meaning out. See, airship sonship. See, it's huyotesia, and there's four syllables. So I got to put in both word, both meanings, okay? Di Yesu Christu, through Jesus the Christ. I have to insert the in there in order to get the meter to, to, and the cadence to match, okay? In, in Greek, if they leave out a definite article, okay, it stresses quality. So, but in English, you actually stick it in to stress quality. In other words, there's Jesus the Christ and there's no other. And and if they had stuck a, the the in here, they would be saying that's called monadic. And they would be saying that there's no other. But that's already known from other verses in scripture. So it's not needed here. All right. I swear to sin, di Jesu Christu, into airship sonship, through Jesus the Christ. See how that works? Okay. I mean, you know, it's not as elegant in English as it could be, but, you know, maybe you'll come up with a better answer. Okay, now we come to our second, our second phrase. I said, Peter Zosan, the Anastasius, into hope ever living through his resurrection. The word ever is not in the translation. It's not in the Greek, but it's meant, see, into a living hope into a living confident expectation really. Greek word elpis has a very strong meaning in Greek. It's a, got a particular cultural meaning of confident future expectation. It's used by Plato in the Philebus. Okay? I can't I can't stick confident expectation in here. 
okay that won't work so I used our Greek our English hope which is you know really timid I don't like that word hope in English I hope so yeah all right okay this is I know it I'm confident it just hasn't happened yet all right that's what the Greek elpis means Elpida is the genitive is the accusative genitive accusative okay so I said Peter Zosan the Anastasios into hope ever living through his resurrection okay Jesu Christu ek nekron Jesus the Christ from the dead now I capitalize the dead because in English that would make you think of a bunch of dead people alright like the walking dead is a famous you know series on on TV right now that's what this literally means from the dead ones okay not just from death from the dead okay and that's really important to stress because there's some really dippy Christians out there who think that that hell doesn't exist or that it won't last forever this is one of many verses whenever you see this phrase in Greek ek nekron, it means out from the dead ones the dead people meaning that they are in Hades there is a hell Every time you see this, it's a shorthand for reminding you that hell exists. So if there's a Christian out there who says that there's no hell, or you know you don't go to hell when you die, or there's soul sleep, or there's some other kind of nonsense, just stop listening to them because they don't know enough doctrine to come in out of the rain. Okay, they might get the gospel right, but that's about it. Okay, this means out from the dead ones meaning Jesus Christ, just like the Nicene Creed said, went down into hell. Peter will be talking about that in his letter. He went down into hell. And he gave the gospel to everybody in hell. Yeah, because they can still get out. He paid for everybody. Okay? They can get out. Oh, but they didn't choose to go with him when he resurrected, did they? Because when he resurrected, he took all of the paradise compartment with him. That's Ephesians 4, 8, and 9. Okay, so when it says here from the dead, it means dead people, and it means that in English too. So there are dead people who are living somewhere, but not on earth, not, you know, on top side. Okay, hell exists. Don't pretend it doesn't. It's the main reason why the gospel is so important for people to know down here. All right, so now we go on. I sat on kata, into whom we are. All right. We are is an ellipsis. It is meant in the text. Okay? When it just says ice out tone, it means we are in him. Okay? Kata really means per, and it belongs on the next line, but, you know, I can't, I don't know how to quite fix this. If I just say into whom, that's too few syllables. All right? Because it's ice out tone, it's three syllables here. And it sounds better to say kata. And in Greek, when you say kata, that sort of is, acts like a little colon. And then you're waiting with a breath. There's a pause. And then after the kata comes the content. So in English, I had to put it down here. See, per is on the next line for kata. All right. I, in English, you, you have to run it all together, okay? But but in dramatic Greek, you just kata, and then they're waiting, like, according to what? And then that's the next line. See, it's more dramatic. So that's why I split it that way, in the Greek versus the English, okay? Eis auton kata, into whom we are, den yudokian, per his own delight. Okay, yudokian means good pleasure, delight, really good thinking. And this is Paul's first anaphora. He builds a whole story about history, future history, future of church, around this anaphora. And the other anaphora are nested within it. So what Peter does, knowing that, this is what blows me away, because I got my confirmation now about how I parse this based on Peter. Peter knew that, so what he does is he sticks his I said Peter Zosan, the Anastasios, Jesu Christu Necron in front. So he's going to nest the nested anaphora. Okay? And then you got your last, your next part. Do telematos out to, of his own will and purpose. 
telematos is a legal is a legal connotation it means that your official will the thing that you're going to put in writing that you want to be legally enacted okay so eudokian is pleasure you're good it's your will all right also but it's your pleasure in it it's your delight it's your approval you're approving something you're thinking well of something so that's eudokian all right telematos is when you put it in legal force Telema, matos is, is um, genitive ending. That's the genitive ending. Telema, will. Tele is the is the verb, okay? And this is where, in each case, Paul marks off an emperor as dying, and the emperor takes his place as undoing what the dead emperor wanted. It's really hysterical the way Paul did that. You know, because Paul's charting the future of the Roman Empire and the future of what would become the Roman Church. All right, it's really embarrassing. Okay, so, tu telematos autu. I'm sorry, my mouse doesn't work well. Tu telematos autu, of his own will and purpose, is how I translated it. Okay, next, we got a refrain again, Peter nesting the anaphora. I said, Peter Zosandi, Anastasios in to hope ever living through his resurrection Jesu Christu et Necron Jesus the Christ from the dead now Peter starts his new stanza and this time he's again nesting the next see this is the second anaphora and he's going to nest that also I'm dying to see how he finishes the passage he's going to nest the second anaphora so what does he do you go straight from Peter 1 3 b Okay, to Peter 1 4. And then again, you're starting a new refrain. Aiskleronomian, entrance to possession. Now, kleronomian means possession, but it really, it, it's got a connotation of the possession you get as a result of his inheritance. Okay, so it's often translated as inherit or inheritance in the Bible for good reason. Okay, but it literally means the possession you get as a result of having inherited. All right? Ice means into. So in order to get the meter to go, because it's ice kleronomian, it's entrance to possession. Okay? Into possession was too few syllables. I needed one more, so I said entrance. Entrance to possession, ice kleronomian, aftar tom, that can't die. Now, technically, aftarton means imperishable. Thartom, this was a, a, a password that you had to use to prove you were Greek. PH and TH together was something they used for passwords because non Greeks couldn't do that. Tha, tha, tha. Think of FTH. Tha, okay? Aftarton that can't die it literally means that can't perish but that's too many syllables so I just wrote die okay come yan ton now remember we got crassus here so you don't pronounce that it's just come and that's a very frequent thing in Greek it's called crassus all right k-r-a-s-i-s -S, if you're gonna google on it okay come yan ton and can't spoil now me I know is the verb and it literally means to take your excrement you 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 slept at night and in bed and you had a little pot underneath your bed and when you had to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night you just peed into the pot okay and then because they they had high rises back in the old days too all right and then in the morning what you did is you threw your your pot outside your window and if anybody happened to be on the window they received the contents of your pot, and that was called miaino, to be defiled, okay, to be dirtied, to be, you know, have germs thrown on you. What do you want to call it? That's what miaino was. Okay, so the noun form is, the, the, the anti-noun form is amianto, okay, amiantos, the, the N ending is accusative. Amiat, amiantas. All right. <coughs> so it, technically, it should say and can't be defiled. All right. 
or undefiled okay but that doesn't work for the meter here so what I did is I just said and can't spoil all right Camaranton nor fade away and that's typical translation so I don't have to explain that okay if you want to be staccato you, you put the accent where you know it is showing here is probably how they actually said it when they were chanting okay if you want to be you know like syncopated and more correct Greek right under God's guarding the word under is not in the text but it's in the word this is Terrell and it means to guard hold close cherish watch over okay it the word it's got a connotation of cherish in it it's not the same as Greek word philoso which also means to guard all right this has the connotation of it's something you dearly love you want to hold it close to you you never want to be apart from it that's why you guard it all right so our inheritance our entrance to possession all this is something God guards now the word God isn't in the text either all right so I better change that but it's meant I mean hopefully you know that under God's guarding all right this is an eta, it's pronounced like a sort of long a. 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 Just sort of when you're saying eh, widen your mouth a little. Eh, a, a, a. As if you were smiling. Sort of smile a little bit when you say the eta. Say eh, but sort of smile. And then you'll get the eta. Okay? Under God's guarding. And I couldn't get the lines to line up exactly right here, but you can tell where it is. All right, that's at five seven. That says it's at five six. So this this line is a little higher than I'd like, but I can't fix it. Okay, and then we come to our final phrase, and Uranus is humas, in the heavens for you all. The word all is not in the translation. Okay, but it's meant. And that's why I didn't even bracket it, because this is you plural. This is accusative you plural. For all of you. The word all isn't in there, but that's what kumas really means. For you all. Alright? So that covers that part. Alright, so then we come down to Ephesians 1 6 again. We're in the second second stanza started here. And now we're in the back to Ephesians. I sepai non into his praise. You could also say epai non, which is a more frequent, common, correct way to say the, ver the word. Epai non. It means praise while thinking good report, literally. Okay, a good report of somebody else. And that's why we call it praise. Epai non. So you could say this I sepai non. I sepai non. I sepai non into his praise I sepai non into his praise pick whichever way you like to say it okay but this is the second anaphora that is nested by Peter's next clause so for sure he's he's playing on the anaphora meaning okay this is just blows me away I'm, I'm really grateful because I really sweated out doing the Ephesians parsing Okay, that was that was very nerve-wracking. It's the most complicated document I've ever written in my life. All right, and he's playing to it. So the fact that I thought there was an anaphora here, well, yeah, there is, because he's playing to it. Okay, I sepai non into his praise. I sepai non into his praise. Say it how you like. Dosis is charitos auto. Glory the grace his. Those are the actual words in the Greek. Now, how do you translate that? Well, I needed an extra syllable. So what I did is say, glory of grace that is his, yes. Okay, technically speaking, the word that is, those literal words are not there, but that is what it's saying. And it's so much that's what it's saying that I didn't even bracket it. 
See, because it's idiom. It's an idiom. Doxis tes caritos auto. Glory of grace his. Okay, glory of grace that is his. Yes. The yes is what has to be bracketed because there's no word yes in there. But, you know, it's it's got that emphatic. Doxis tes caritos auto. Glory of grace that is his. Yes. You know, you'd be taking your fists and putting them in front of your face, putting your arms up and going down with your elbows like you did at a victory match at a football game. Yes! Okay? You know what I'm talking about. All right? So that's why I translated it that way. Es jaretos en gemas, in whom we're holy graced out. Now, the word holy isn't actually in... There's no separate word holy in here, but echaritosen means to be utterly and completely and fully and beyond which not graced out. My pastor translated it as completely graced out, utterly graced out. All right? So I put in holy because that's a play on English, H-O-L-Y, too. I mean, you know, that that's appropriate. Okay? So I didn't bracket that either, okay? Entagapamenoi. Okay, this is dative case for agapamene. Okay. Beloved. Okay, it's a it's a participle, dative participle. So inside the beloved, this is a nickname for Christ. So that's why it's translated that way. And means inside, by means of, by agency of, through. Okay, it's it's got a, a, a geographical location concept to it. You're inside Christ. Yeah, literally, because our sins went inside Him. Okay, inside the beloved. And toyapamenoi. You see how that works? All right. And then we come to our last part of it. Okay. Enoyechomen. Okay. Paul concatenates this. So be enechomen. But they're drawing out the syllables here. Okay? Enthagapamenoi. Peter is still, the cadence still demands that you concatenate here, which is a big surprise to me because I was guessing at concatenation before I saw Peter. But here it's drawing out because you, 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 you're drawling a little here. In Tarapamenoi, inside the beloved, in Toyachomen. So in Peter, you're going to pronounce the E. In Noyachomen. But you're still slurring them together. Okay? In Paul, it's literally concatenated. He's concatenating that into one syllable. But you draw it out when you're, you're playing the marching song in Peter. It's still one syllable, but you draw it out. Okay? And it's going to sound like two that way. Okay? Now, echomen means we have, we hold. Its first meaning is to grasp. And in English, you'll usually find it translate, we have redemption. It comes to mean to have. It's a result of grasping and holding. But, how do you want to put this? It's an inheritance, okay? An inheritance is something you hold, something you grasp. It is something you have, but it's something tangible, okay? So that's why I opted to translate this with hold. If you want to translate it have, that's fine. But the root meaning of echomen means to grab at and therefore have, okay? Okay, so we grasp something. Okay, we grasp because he grasps us. That's the, the funniness of this. I am pursued. I am held by Christ Jesus. I hold Christ because he holds me. Paul plays that word game a lot in his letters. All right, so that's why I wanted to use hold. But if you don't like it, change it to have. Okay? Enoyechomen, by whom we now hold. The word now isn't in the text, but it's obviously meant because it's present tense. Okay. Tenapolutrosin. 
the redemption rescue okay it's apolut apolutrosi okay the redemption oh, well see you have to tenapolutrosin the redemption rescue the redemption rescue okay but I don't think they said it that way when they were marching I think they said tenapolutrosin so the redemption rescue if you don't like that change it alright the two haimatasautu via his blood were made pure yes Okay, what this says is through the blood his. Those are the actual Greek words. Through the blood his. Okay, but it was understood, this phrase was understood to mean purification because through his blood was shorthand for saying pouring on the mercy seat, sprinkling on the mercy seat from which you got purity because he died for you. Okay, so that's why I stuck in this whole phrase. We're made pure, yes. And again, it's, you know, you got your, your two fists in the air and you bring down both of your elbows real hard and fast. Yes! Okay. Via his blood, we're made pure. Yes! Okay. You don't like that? Change it. Then I face him. Then I face him. Okay. Debt now canceled. Then I face him. That now canceled and you're gonna stick uh, uh, an exclamation point there all right that now canceled you're gonna stick an exclamation point there because you're excited about it being canceled now in Paul there are two other words to end the actual verse domen. that means that now canceled from um, transgressions okay paraptomen literally means a blemish or a spot on your skin that's really ugly okay and and the idea is that you don't it doesn't you know count as a debt against you <coughs> okay the blemishes but there's something else about a facing that I need to bring up in the ancient world afiemi is the verb afi Aphasis is the noun. And aphasis was literally a bill that you owed due to a gambling or other debt. And so if that, okay, well, it's, it's more than that. Aphasis is when you take somebody, somebody owes you money for whatever reason, usually gambling. If somebody owes you money and you stamp paid on that bill, even though they haven't paid you, you are canceling their debt to you. That's literally what aphasis means. That's what afiemi means. It's translated forgiveness, and that is just way too tame. And it's even misleading. You owe God a debt. So do I. The debt that we owe God is we owe God, you know, how do you want to call it, at least pleasant activity from watching us. It should be pleasant for him to watch us. But it's not. It's not because we sin. So sin creates a debt that we owe to pay back for what we did wrong because we're not pleasant to watch. It's like, you know, when you go to, when somebody hurts you, you can go sue them to get money for the damages they did to you. Okay, well, their damage is owing to God for having to watch us be so crappy. And instead of him collecting it from us, he collected it from Christ, and he just stamps our bill that's owed him, cancel. That's what afeyemi means. That's what afeyemi means. So debt canceled is a closer meaning to what the word actually says than um, the English translation. So that's why I did it. So tein afeyemi, debt now canceled. And again, the word now is not in the text, but it's meant. All right? And this is a noun, not a verb, but it has this, the, it's a verbal noun. To cancel a debt this is literally what the verb means. And that the cancellation of a debt is what that noun in black means. I face in. I face this. In this nominative case, this is the accusative case. All right? I mean, if you're going to learn this, I want you to understand what it really says. 
because this is precious, okay? Okay, so now we come to our final stanza, and it's real short. It's kind of like a whole refrain. He's Peter is taking the end of what he's quoting in Paul and the beginning of what he started as the second stanza and he's uniting them together again because Enoiakomen, when you get to that end in Paul you're at syllable 151 so he's bridging the time between 151 and 169 by appending this last very short stanza okay so then we repeat it again Aiskleronomian, entrance to possession, afarton, that can't die, kamianton, and can't spoil, kamaranton, nor fade away, teteremenen, under God's guarding, Sorry, wait a minute. And the Rana says, Kumas, in the heavens for you all. Then we come to again, see, he's going to repeat from here down, because this is from 151 to 169 in Paul. Then Napolutrosin, the redemption rescue, the Tochamatosautu, by his blood were made pure, yes. Then the Faisin, that now can salt. So hopefully that helps you get it and, um, you know, practice reading it. If you got better ideas about how it ought to be translated, let me know. Thanks a lot. Peace out.